everyone! Princess Ariel here with the Princess Party Company. I am so excited you guys could join my live today. I'm going to be reading you guys two of my most favorite stories in the whole wide world. I am so excited for you guys to listen. My first story is called A Special Son. May I have your attention, please, Sebastian called. The crab tapped his baton on a podium. Keen Tryon's birthday was in a couple of days, and the court musicians were planning a special performance. Tryon's daughter, Ariel, that's me, would sing while the orchestra plays a brand new tune. Sebastian wanted the concert to be spectacular, but they still had a lot of work to do. The crowd raised his baton and the musicians began to play. Beautiful music filled the sea until claim. Who did that? Sebastian demanded. Um, I did, a young mermaid named Coral replied quietly. The best way to play the cymbals is to hold on to them. Now, if there are no more interruptions, Sebastian said grumpily, let's continue. The rehearsal went from bad to worse. Coral dropped her cymbal a second time. Clane. Then she tripped and landed on top of a kettle drum. As Ariel watched, Sebastian threw down his baton. Rehearsal is over, the crab yelled and stormed off. Ariel helped Coral up. Don't mind Sebastian. I'll never be able to get the song right, let alone perfect, Coral said. Don't worry about it, Ariel said. The only thing I'm perfect at is making Sebastian mad. You should have seen his face the last time I went to the surface. You've been to the surface, Coral asked? You must be the bravest mermaid ever. Is it something that I like to do, Ariel said. I'm always gathering treasures. Would you like to see my collection? I'd love to, Coral said. The two mermaids swam to Ariel's grotto. Make yourself home, Ariel said. Coral when they arrived. Flounder the fish was there. He waved a fin at them. The young mermaid swam around, examining jewelry and shiny trinkets. Where did you find all of this? Coral said, as she put on a strand of pearls. I found some of it in a sunken ship, replied Ariel. You've been inside a sh sunken ship? Coral said with a gasp. Weren't you scared? Of course not. Were you, Flounder? Ariel teased. Nothing to it, the fish fibbed. So what are we waiting for, Ariel said. Let's go. Coral and Flounder trailed behind Ariel. Soon they arrived at a ship that had sunk to the ocean floor. Let's see what's in there, Ariel urged. Her friends followed her through a large porthole. Inside the ship, Ariel found an old steamer trunk. Look at this, she cried, holding up a purple parasol. And this, Coral exclaimed, picking up a fancy lampshade. I wonder what it's for. My friend Scuttle can tell us, Ariel said. Follow me. Where are we going, Coral asked Flounder. To the surface, he replied. Soon, the friends arrived at the surface. Scuttle the seagull examined their treasures. That is a twirl furler, he said, looking at Coral's lampshade. It's what human ladies wear when they're going somewhere important. Before long, the friends had to leave. As they headed home, Coral asked Ariel if she could keep the twirler floral in the grotto. It might get broken at home, she explained. Of course, Ariel agreed. The grotto is my secret place, and it can be yours too. A few days later, as Ariel swam toward the grotto, she heard someone singing. The voice was strong and clear, but sweet too. When Ariel arrived, she saw her new friend. Coral, I didn't know you had such a lovely voice. You should be singing in the concert, not playing the cymbals. The little blonde mermaid shrugged. I just like singing to myself, she said. I've never actually performed. The next day at rehearsal, Sebastian made Ariel in the orchestra play practice over and over, but some, something always seemed to go wrong. The big day is tomorrow, the crab said. This concert needs to be fit for a keen, keen Triton to be exact. So let's try it again. So they did. The rehearsal went on and on. By the end of the afternoon, everyone was tired. See you tomorrow, Ariel said. 
Her voice was raspy. On the day of the concert, Ariel could only whisper. She had lost her voice. Luckily, she knew who could take her place. Me, Coral said when the princess asked her. But I can't. You must, Sebastian insisted. Otherwise, King Triton's birthday celebration will be ruined. I can't sing in front of a crowd of mirror people, Coral said. Sure you can, Flounder said. Coral thought about how she had visited a sunken ship and gone to the service, things she had never thought she could do, all because of Ariel. Now her new friend was counting on her. All right, Coral said slowly, I'll do it. That night, when Coral peeked out from backstage, she nearly fainted. The entire kingdom was there, including her parents and her brothers and sisters. King Trian and Ariel sat in the royal box. When it was time, Coral took a deep breath and swam on stage. As the orchestra started playing, she sang softly. But as she went on, Coral's voice got louder. Before she knew it, the concert was over, and the audience began to clap and cheer. Coral, said Sebastian, smiling. You can give away your symbols from now on. You're going to be a court singer. After the show, Ariel went to congratulate her friend. She found Coral with her family. I didn't know you could seem like that, one of Coral's sister said. No one ever known it was Ariel, replied Coral. She believed in me. Ariel still couldn't speak, but she gave Coral a big hug. It had been such a wonderful evening. Oh, I love this story so much. It's such a wonderful story about that time in my life, and that was just such a precious experience. So, next story is going to be another wonderful story for you guys. It is called Ariel to the Rescue. Oh, Eric, this is wonderful, Ariel said excitedly as she twirled around the ballroom with her prince. I can dance with you and see the ocean. Do you miss your sea friends, he said. Sometimes, Ariel replied a bit sadly, but I love being with you. Bright and early the next morning, Prince Eric saw Ariel walking along the beach. He caught up to her and they strolled together along the sand. The prince knew Ariel was hoping to visit Flounder and Sebastian, as well as their other friends from the sea, but they were nowhere to be found. Eric and Ariel watched the waves crash onto the shore. It's rough out there today. If I were a fish, I think I might be too scared to go close to shore, the prince said gently. Don't worry, Ariel. We'll figure out a way to bring together the land and the sea. At dusk, Ariel went to Eric. I was thinking about what you said earlier, she said. I want to show you something. Ariel led the prince to the quiet lagoon they had rowed in long ago. Do you think my friends would feel safer visiting me here, she said. Eric rubbed his chin. Hmm, maybe. He had an idea, but he wanted to make sure it would work before he said anything to Ariel. A few weeks later, Eric found Ariel walking along the beach again. Come with me, he said. I have a surprise for you. He took her to the lagoon. The first thing Ariel noticed was that it had a big wall around. The wall would keep out dangerous sea creatures such as sharks, but it also had a gate so that Ariel's friends could enter the lagoon. In fact, Flounder, Scuttle, and Sebastian were there to greet her. Isn't this a great idea, Scuttle said? I helped, you know. Ariel was thrilled. Oh, Eric, I love it. Ariel was so excited that she waded into the water to meet her friends. Then she saw something in the, the lagoon. Look, she said, as they watched a small dolphin leap out of the water. He's just a baby. I wonder where his mother is, Flounder said. He swam across the lagoon, but the baby dolphin raced away. Poor little guy, Flounder said. He seems scared of me. But the princess wouldn't give up. Soon, she had coaxed the baby to swim over to her. I wish there was something more we could do, Ariel said. I bet his mother is on the other side of that wall. Don't worry, Flounder said. We'll find her. But a few days later, Sebastian and Flounder still hadn't found her. This is terrible, Sebastian said. We've looked everywhere under the sea, but cannot find the baby's mother. What should we do? 
Ariel looked at the little dolphin. Tomorrow she would ask more of her friends from under the sea to help search. Later that night, Ariel awoke to the sound of thunder. From the palace, she saw big waves crashing on the shore. Eric joined her. Are you worried about that baby dolphin? He must be terrified, Ariel replied. We need to go to him. Eric followed Ariel into the stormy night. When they arrived at the lagoon, Flounder was trying to calm the frightened baby dolphin. Ariel climbed onto the lagoon wall and called to the sea creatures. Help me, please. I'm Ariel, princess of the seas. I need my father, King Triton. A whale was the first to respond. Then a school of fish flashed their fins. Thank you, the princess shouted. Below the surface, sea creatures raced to find King Triton. Ariel returned to Eric. I know my father will be able to help, she told him. While they waited, Eric jumped into the sea and let the dolphin to calmer short waters. Suddenly, there was a flash of light. King Triton had arrived. The storm quieted down. The baby dolphin's mother was at the lagoon gate, frantically trying to get in. Oh dear, Ariel exclaimed. The gate won't open. She can't get in. Ariel, Eric looked at King Triton. Do you mind? Not at all, he replied. Swim back, everyone. He raised his trident and blasted down the wall. The dolphins swam to each other. Then the baby went to Triton to thank him. That night, the moon rose, but there was no royal ball at the palace. Instead, Eric and Ariel returned to the lagoon. The baby dolphin and his mother swam up and playfully splashed the prince and princess. I think this means we're forgiven, Ariel said with a laugh. She was so glad that all of her friends were gathered together for a quiet evening, including her new dolphin pals. The end. Thank you guys so much, princesses and princes. It's been just so magical spending this time with you. If you'd ever want a video call with me, I would love that. If you want more information on that, visit princessparty.com to find out how. Now, I have a very special message for everyone, so listen closely. Remember that the world is always darkest just before the dawn. I never want any of you to lose your most precious gift, which is hope. In this time, you need to listen to your parents. In these times, they really do know best. See you guys soon and have a magical day. Bye.